And joining us today in our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a man who's written an interesting book. It's called The Gene Therapy Plan, Taking Control of Your Genetic Destiny with Diet and Lifestyle. We're joined today by uh, Dr. Mitchell L. Gaynor from up in uh, New York in uh, kind of a different type of, uh, I wouldn't say a diet book, but we'll find out all about it. He joined us on the telephone today. Doctor, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good to have a chance to talk. I'm doing very well. Yeah, my hometown up there in New York. How are things uh, in the city today? Oh, beautiful, beautiful spring day. You finally get out of the bad winter, so that's good Good news. Uh, it took a while. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to call this a diet book because it really isn't, but in a sense it is. But it, the, the, I guess the, the difference is uh, you talk about how diet and, and how we can affect uh, or at least maybe uh, unaffect the genes we already have, right, or make them better if they're not good genes. Is, is, that, that, is that accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's uh, accurate. You know, we used to think... Uh, that our genetic destiny was determined by the genes that we were born with. Now we know uh, that our genes are dynamic structures uh, that can be changed by their expression for better or worse throughout our lifetime. So that's why it's called the gene therapy plan, because all of us are doing gene therapy every time we put food in our body for good or for harm because there are literally thousands of genes that have to do with everything from obesity to cancer uh, to uh, memory uh, to uh, maintaining an ideal body weight, uh, and they're affected uh, by what it is you're putting in your body and how much exercise you're getting. I guess you know certain genes we can't do anything about, it, whether you have blue eyes or whatever color hair or maybe your height or that kind of thing, but th th those you can't do much about, but... Others, you can, right? I mean, if, say, your parents, unfortunately, that, want to die from cancer, it doesn't mean you have to get it, right? That's 100% right. So that's the leap uh, that most people took up until relatively recently. So uh, the gene therapy plan is about a new field uh, called epigenetics, which I was fortunate uh, to be at Cornell and Rockefeller University uh, doing research on this just as it was developing, and I'm still on the staff at Cornell. And, uh, you know, we can't change the genes themselves. Uh, but just because, you know, you get your eye color and your hair color from your parents, that doesn't mean that because you have a high family history of cancer or a lot of people in your family uh, were overweight or diabetic or had heart disease or even developed Alzheimer's disease, that that has to be your fate, your destiny, because there are so many thousands of genes that are affected uh, for good or for harm by what it is we're putting in our bodies uh, that we really have a lot of control. And it's never too late to bring back balance to this. And the reason it's never too late is because you can always affect gene expression that has to do with inflammation, uh, detoxification, uh, and those types of things. So uh, I think this gives people a level of control uh, that they never thought they had. Yeah, I should have said when I uh, introduced you, Dr. Dr. Gaynor is an oncologist, so uh, you, you've had a lot of uh, experience, uh, unfortunately, dealing with people with cancer, but this epigenetics is, 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 a, is a great breakthrough, isn't it? A uh, wonderful breakthrough. I mean, it's been uh, literally revolutionizing uh, cancer uh, therapy. Uh, but as I was doing my initial uh, research into cancer, uh, I started noticing uh, that a lot of the things that cause cancer uh, also uh, caused us to develop heart disease, diabetes, be overweight, uh, become more forgetful, uh, age earlier, develop uh, arthritis, uh, and uh, those kinds of things. And these are the types of things we can take control over. So we used to think, for instance, heart disease was just caused by having a high cholesterol. So you got your cholesterol under control, that was it. Now we know cholesterol has much less to do with it than uh, inflammation. So inflammation is caused by too much white sugar and white flour and heat-damaged oils. In other words, the things uh, that are found in fast food places and processed foods uh, 
instead of whole foods. And what that does is it damages the blood vessels, and that promotes plaque formation. Also, the inflammation will damage the worst types of cholesterol and make that more sticky uh, to the blood vessel walls. So the top three things I tell people to do to combat heart disease and inflammation uh, is one, include chia seeds in your diet. Chia seeds uh, can be bought at uh, most markets nowadays. Uh, it was a staple from Aztec civilization. It's very rich in omega-3s. Uh, it doesn't have to be ground like flaxseed. And it has eight times more omega-3s by weight than salmon and seven times more vitamin C uh, than oranges. So that's one very useful thing. The other thing is turmeric. Turmeric is what gives curry its yellow color. Mm. And you can buy turmeric powder. You can use it for cooking. Uh, it's also very inhibitory against cancer, as well as uh, helping with cholesterol profile. Uh, and the other thing is ginger. Uh, you can uh, make fresh ginger tea uh, by just getting four to six thin slices of ginger, uh, putting it in a cup of water, uh, and boil it for about 10 minutes. Uh, that contains 10 antioxidants, all of which are stronger than vitamin E and a lot of anti-inflammatories. So the book's filled with recipes, practical juicing recipes, and, you know, I really make the science to where anybody can understand it and use it. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. You brought up the, the term fats, and, and you have a whole uh, diagram in the book about uh, they're actually good fats, right? I know there's some bad ones, but some that are good for you, and carbohydrates, too, and, and protein. You, you don't have to just get rid of all types of meat either, don't you, do you? No, and that's the problem. That's why most people have become so frustrated uh, by diets. You know, they've tried uh, one diet. Uh, that says, oh, you can have all the fat you want, uh, and that's all you should have. They have another one that says, oh, get rid of every grain in your diet. Uh, you know, it's uh, just going to be converted to sugar. They try, you know, all these different bad diets, but, you know, humans evolve eating an amazing mixture of foods that were available at different times and in different quantities. And the latest science shows that there's no reason for any one group of nutrients to be favored or marginalized. So I start the gene therapy plan with the rule of thirds. And what the rule of thirds basically says is a third of your calories should come from healthy protein. And though that would include eggs, uh, it would include lean meats, it would include fish uh, and tree nuts. A third of your calories should come from healthy carbs. Those would include whole grains, but not processed grains, uh, things like lentils, uh, and uh, those are absolutely critical. Also, uh, almonds, pecans, uh, Swiss cheese, and a third should come from healthy fat. Uh, that is critically important because there are omega-3 fatty acids uh, that are found in cold, deep-water fish like salmon, haddock, and cod, also in chia seeds, flax seed, pumpkin seeds, even dandelion leaves are loaded with <laughs> omega-3s. Then healthy omega-6s include things that come from olive oil, and also coconut uh, oil are loaded with good omega-6. So you should have olive oil every day, preferably extra virgin, uh, but it's not the best cooking oil. Uh, because you denature a lot of the good ingredients in olive oil, which has all these cancer-preventative, heart-healthy nutrients in it. So it's better to pour it or drizzle it over something after it's been cooked or raw. The best cooking oils are uh, cold press or uh, organic uh, coconut oil or cold-pressed grapeseed oil or even butter. Uh, because those have the highest smoke points, and you're not going to be putting a lot of uh, free radicals into your body with yeah. those. And, and the good news is uh, a lot of these uh, things you just talked about uh, in the older days, uh, not too long ago, were hard to get. Now, uh, you know, stores like Whole Foods, and uh, you can get these types of ingredients much easier nowadays, right? Absolutely. You can even order them uh, online. Right. And uh, so, you know, it's really important to also... Uh, think about uh, the fact that we're living in a very toxic world. Uh, so there are, uh, you know, a lot of uh, 
toxins from pesticide residues to herbicide residues uh, to heavy metal toxicity. So you want to put things in your body that are going to help your body rid itself of toxins. A study that I talk about in the book uh, out of Johns Hopkins looked at women with and without breast cancer, women with the lowest levels of uh, the major detoxifying gene uh, and enzyme, had a fourfold increased risk of developing breast cancer, and we've seen that for a number of other types of cancers. So you, detoxification is key. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, loaded with things that work on a genetic level to increase detoxifying enzymes. Rid your body of these carcinogens. Garlic, uh, if you're going to use a garlic press to make a marinade, let it sit for about 10 minutes because that activates a lot of the uh, nutrients in garlic, helps with detoxification. Also, garlic is one of the best things you can do to keep dormant cancer cells dormant or if you have active cancer cells, move them back toward dormancy. Wow. And uh, if you don't like the taste of garlic, you can buy deodorized garlic supplements uh, that do the exact same thing. Uh, and uh, turmeric uh, is absolutely key uh, in either the form of curry powder uh, or uh, turmeric root. Uh, and you can make teas, you can make smoothies, you can cook with it. Uh, but all these are working uh, at the level of gene therapy. And, and as an oncologist, the doctor, I mean, uh, you've seen, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people that... that don't make it through, but are you more optimistic now uh, with uh, this type of uh, eating and diet and exercise and all that, that uh, cancer rates will go down and you can, you can overcome it? I am. I think, you know, the best uh, thing, we're living in a country, unfortunately, today where one in three Americans are going to hear the words, you have cancer. That's going to one in two mm. in the next two to three years. But the good news is uh, a lot of these foods markedly lower uh, your cancer risk, uh, and also the advances that we're making uh, in the therapy and the treating of cancer, I've never been more optimistic for it. These are all also based on epigenetics, on gene expression, so everything from upregulating the immune system, uh, but there's a lot of nutrients people can consume to increase immune function. Uh, one of them is that I talk about in the book is chaga mushroom. Chaga grows on birch tree bark, uh, but it's one of the most powerful anti-cancer mushrooms known to man. Oregano uh, is loaded uh, with anti-cancer nutrients and nutrients for the immune system. It helps with everything from uh, viruses uh, to bacteria. Uh, so, you know, we're just uh, getting... Uh, to the point now to where we can take control uh, of our genetic destiny in such a big way uh, that we never thought possible. Well, that is good news to hear. And again, the name of the book is The Gene Therapy Plan. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Mitchell L. Gaynor today. And uh, uh, Doctor, I know you have a website. Give that out. People can get a hold of you and get more information on the book. Yes, uh, the website is genechanger, G-E-N-E, changer.com. And there's a free newsletter people can sign up for. They can get the book there. Uh, and also meal plans, juicing recipes, those kinds of things. Great. Doctor, appreciate you taking the, the time. I know you're on a busy uh, book tour, but uh, enjoy the book. I know our audience will as well. And hopefully we can talk to you again. Thanks for joining us today. Likewise. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles.